The following presentation is brought to you as a courtesy from Forex Academy. This is part of our service, Advanced Technical Analysis Course. If you find it interesting and wish to be updated on new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our community at forex.academy and receive all our services for free. Your like is also highly appreciated. Enjoy. Phase three is, as we saw earlier and discussed earlier, just essentially a repeat of what we see in phase one. But from you as a technical analyst, by applying your first visual observation to price action, you will be able to identify a change in price behavior if you follow prices very closely. If we just take a look at this particular example, it is very clear that the underlying price behavior between phase one and phase two are very different. Just to repeat myself, we have more of a sideways move, we have more of a directional move. At some point in time, price action has shown to be much more volatile. And indeed, even if we look at this pullback down to these lows over here, this is a much greater pullback to any pullback that we've seen over the course of this recovery in price action. Therefore, an early observation tells us that underlying price behavior is changing. This then makes or implies that the underlying market behavior is changing. And does this send out a warning sign with respect to a possible change in market sentiment when it comes to looking for any changes in the underlying sentiment conditions that exist in the market. So just simply observe the nature of price action as your starting point. What we can essentially gather from this activity here is that the markets trade down to these lows, having found resistance at this particular point. They then rally up to this high, only to once again sell off sharply. Our focus of attention will be now as to whether the market can find support at this level and then start to recover. If indeed that is the case, will or does the market have the ability to trade above this last trend high? If it doesn't and it starts to pull back, will we see a pullback that will then ultimately confirm a break below these lows and then perhaps suggest a trend reversal in the market. In exactly the same way as we evaluated price action in phase one, we apply the exact same principles in phase three. If price action moves below these key support levels, having failed to generate a new trend high, a reversal has indeed taken place. And that essentially means that the market condition will have changed from bullish to bearish. Characteristics of phase three. <clears throat> Early on during the development of phase three, we see markets exceeding previous tops. That's normal, it is an uptrend. Perhaps from an emotional perspective, certainly if, you, if you're dealing with things like foreign exchange, there might be some fear that some degree of intervention might be taking place. This could also apply, for example, if you were in the oil market. Currently, the oil market is trading very firmly. If it continues to go higher, perhaps it's up to 80, maybe even $90 over the next weeks and months, um, certainly as the market starts to approach $100, it might become a little concerned as to whether um, there might be some, uh, some uh, intervention, let's use that word, that might make traders somewhat wary. This all has an effect in terms of the decision-making process and would explain why that's a more volatile price action has taken place during phase three. From a more macro perspective, if we've been dealing with a period of global growth, perhaps some fundamental factors are beginning to suggest that these economies are beginning to show signs of some weakness. 
certainly from a media perspective, and the media, as we know, will always play an important role in terms of messaging and also creating, and to a degree, perhaps even managing underlying sentiment in the market. The media is still reporting positive news, but the market is perhaps, let's say, the rather more savvy institutional type investor is perhaps wondering how far further the market can actually go. It is always a period in phase three that we see increased public participation. This is certainly from an equity perspective. If we've had a multi-year trend, um, the public, uh, or what we call the, the retail investor, seems to continuously still get involved simply because the underlying trend remains up and there is this perception that it will continue to remain that way. There are potentially a few scares and profit-taking causes concern, perhaps stops are raised. Now, we may say to ourselves, okay, well, what scares are we talking about? What profit-taking or why is profit-taking causing uh, uh, or is a function of perhaps some concern developing? Simply by looking at price action, it is very clear that something occurred at this point in time to cause a relatively sharp sell-off in price action. If we are not able to identify what actually caused that, we can simply just observe this um, development in price action, and that tells us an enormous amount in terms of what the market is potentially doing. If we understand the type of character traits that we will likely see in phase three, then profit-taking causes concern, or perhaps some scares in the market leads to that type of price action. Being able to see and identify that type of price action would then bring you closer to the belief that this indeed might ultimately prove to be the third and final phase of this trend. It's just an extension from what we just discussed. We tend to see a blow off in price action. Some stops are triggered. People are buying at the highs only to see markets move sharply lower very quickly. They get scared. They cover the positions. This adds further weight to a more volatile environment in price action. From a trend perspective, it is generally seen as the weaker, the weakest rather, of the three phases. And this makes absolutely uh, absolute sense. If we go back to the earlier point that the market is made up of three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three, Clearly, phase three, if, phase, if, the, if the trend is in phase three, means that the trend is very mature. If the trend is mature, it has a very, or it has a much lower probability or likelihood that it will continue in an upward direction. Therefore, it needs to be seen, regarded as the weakest of the three phases, in terms of what a trend ultimately looks to deliver, and that is a move either higher or lower in price action. So those then are your three phases to a trend. What we then move on to is look at defining a trend. Now we've had a discussion thus far when we looked at the various three phases in terms of identifying by evaluating price action where we can make decisions about either consolidation or reversal or an actual trend confirmation. Being able to define a trend will help further with that. And there is a very simple definition to a, to, to a trend, both an uptrend and a downtrend. An uptrend is simply defined as a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend is simply a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. That is your standard definition of a trend. Simply apply this in terms of the way price action is behaving to a trend when analyzing a trend. These are your two definitions. Let us take a closer look. If we're looking at this particular chart in front of us, let's assume that the market has been moving in an upward direction. Or alternatively, what we can assume, to perhaps extend the discussion from the three phases, let's assume, perhaps alternatively, the market has been moving in a downward trend initially. The market finds support at this level to then incur resistance, which then forces prices lower. What we as technical analysts will do is we'll monitor this pullback in price action relative to the last trend low. 
Notice that during this direction, the market has been defined by a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. And as we saw earlier, lower lows and lower highs defines a downtrend. Instead of moving all the way to this low and breaking it, the market then starts to recover. Our focus of attention will then move to this most recent resistance in terms of whether the market, where the price will remain below this trend high or this resistance level and can continue to move in a downward direction or alternatively will it break it. If it does break it, as we see in this particular chart, then we are witnessing and experiencing a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And that, as we saw earlier, defines an uptrend. As long as we see one or other of these sequences, that is the trend that you are dealing with. You can see in this particular instance that the market trades up to this high, sells off down here, starts to recover, and then moves in an upward direction to trade to a new trend high. In other words, it is simply just confirming the uptrend. What we do notice during this latter stage of the trend is that the market trades down to this corrective low, which identifies and provides support. We see price action moving higher, failing to get through this trend high, and instead it then trades below this particular level. Now during this phase over here, we are now witnessing a sequence of lower lows and lower highs that has developed in price action. Therefore, by breaking below this particular support, a reversal has been confirmed. And this essentially is how you define a trend and how you apply your evaluation and your overview to a trend by simply looking at how the trend is behaving. If we go back to what we discussed earlier, and let's just assume again that the market has been moving in a downward direction to these levels. By breaking through this trend high, confirm a reversal and an uptrend. Therefore, we can conclude that this was phase one. The market then enters a trend phase and maintains a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And as long as the sequence of higher highs and higher lows is maintained, we'll assume that the market is in a trend mode, i.e. in phase two of the three phases of a trend. At some stage, the underlying conditions begin to change. The uptrend clearly becomes more exhausted in an, an displaying an inability to continue to push higher and eventually we see price action break through this particular low, whereby we are witnessing a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. That reversal, where the reversal is confirmed following the break of the support area, means that we have now concluded phase three of the three phases of a trend. You've learnt and have been introduced to a very powerful ability to be able to evaluate trends. Take the definition of a trend, take, in, take on board the three phases that you now have a better understanding of that makes up the life cycle of a trend, and you will have the, a greater ability to be able to evaluate where you believe the trend is, and that will then potentially increase the chances of making the correct decision from a trading perspective around the direction of the trend that you believe you are currently dealing with in this particular market or in any particular market rather. So points to take home from this discussion is firstly that as long as the sequence of higher highs and higher lows is maintained, the trend is assumed to be up. Remember the one tenet of Dow theory is that we will always assume a trend to be intact until it has given us enough evidence confirming information that it has indeed reversed. And certainly the opposite condition will apply to a downtrend. So this is how you can evaluate a trend and by understanding and applying the definition, the core definition of what a downtrend and what a, an uptrend is. 
you can appreciate that up until now, it is now clear that a trend definition is absolutely essential. Being able to identify the trend is the starting point to your trading decision. The term that we will use in a later webinar is being able to establish your directional bias. If your conclusion is that the trend is up, then you've made a very important decision in terms of your underlying view that you view this market to be bullish. That then means that you'll be looking for buying opportunities because you're trading in the direction of the trend. So trend definition is essential. A number of other points to take on board as to why this is important is because it allows us to assess the underlying direction of the trend, as we've just discussed, i.e. is the trend up, down, or remember, is it flat or sideways? This it will then necessarily lead to an expression of your underlying view for risk taking. Are you a bull or are you a bear? By being able to identify the key turning points in the trend, in other words, the sequences of highs and lows, you'll be able to detect your risk levels for protection. This will be something that we will see extensively over the course of the entire webinar, the relative importance of risk management. By being able to properly identify the trend, you can then also identify where your risk parameters are in terms of the overview against that trend. You'll then have a much better ability to, to identify where the reversals actually develop, i.e. a shift in sentiment. Up until now, we've specifically looked at the movement of price action in terms of identifying trend, the three phases of a trend, determining whether a trend is intact, and at what point or whether we are entering either phase one or phase three of a trend. What we can also do is we can bring into the discussion some additional tools that will further enhance our ability to define and evaluate a trend. These are trend lines and moving averages that provide some effective tools in managing the trends. And we'll take a look at these now. Before we move on, just to stress the relative importance of a trend, always, always, always be on top of the trend. So if you're just simply looking at this particular chart over here, you can see that the markets have moved essentially from these lows down here up until these highs we've had a clear uptrend in price action. If we look at the internal phases, we can clearly see that we've had an uptrend during this phase over here and a downtrend during this particular phase over here. Would these periods have provided an opportunity for us to capitalize on those moves? Most likely, yes. Very importantly though, we've seen a much more concerted drive in price action from this low up until this high. And you can clearly see, if we simply just look at price action, markets turn from here, pull back to this level, then they recover to a new high. Find resistance at that level, find support down here to start pushing higher. Pull back from these highs, find support at this level, and then begin to push higher. By identifying these turning points, you can clearly see that we are dealing with a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. As long as we can deal with this sequence of higher highs and higher lows in terms of seeing that that condition continues to apply, then we are dealing with an uptrend. What we can also do, because we've come to the conclusion that we are dealing with an uptrend during the period from this low, is we can draw what we would call a trend line. Now, essentially, a trend line is simply just a best fit line that, in your interpretation, represents the or best represents the trend that you're dealing with. What you have to remember with the trend line is just simple. In terms of drawing that trend line, you need a starting point, you need a second point, and then you just need to extend that line from the second point. So you need two points to, to draw the line and then it can be extended automatically from the second point. Most 
any decent charting package will have a very straightforward ability for you to draw trend lines. But you need to ask yourself a couple of questions about trend lines before you can come to the conclusion that you're comfortable using that trend line. And a few of the questions that we can ask, you can see here that we've simply just drawn a trend line. What I've done over here is I've taken this low and I've taken this low in terms of the two points and I've just extended the line forward. Ask yourself a very clear question or a very logical question in terms of the validity of that trend line. If I were to buy every time price action moves to that trend line, historically speaking, would that have provided good trading opportunities? If the answer is yes, then you can feel comfortable that you're using a valid trend line. If the answer is no and it's never been tested, well then you really don't know whether you're dealing with a valid trend line or not. If we look at this illustration over here, if we extend the line going forward, we can see that the market came close to the trend line at this point in time and then started to move higher. Certainly more recently, we can see that the price action traded back to the trend line and then began to move higher. Because this trend line has indeed been tested on a number of occasions, this instance we can clearly see that there are three valid tests now of this trend line, we can feel comfortable that if price action were to trade back to the trend line, there should be a high probability that markets would then rebound and start to push higher. That would then further reinforce the underlying trend condition that we're dealing with, which is bullish. Because we have what we would deem to be a valid trend line, we could also then say to ourselves, well, as long as price action remains above the trend line, then I needn't be concerned about any changes in trend conditions. If, however, price action fails to hold above the trend line, then that would also act as an early warning sign or a reinforcing piece of information that the market has, in terms of sentiment, moved from bullish to bearish. So by applying trend lines, we can further enhance our ability to evaluate and analyze a directional move in the market, in other words, the trend. Let's take a look at another example. What we've done over here is we've drawn a trend line by joining this low to this low over here. We will simply apply the test. If I had bought when markets pulled to this trend line, would that have provided a viable trading opportunity? And the answer is yes. In other words, a trading opportunity in the direction of the trend. We see the market find support and continue to move higher. We see it find support over here and it has continued to move higher. We notice that price action during this period has now broken below the trend line. So the first conclusion is that because price action has held the trend line, this is a valid trend line in terms of using it as a tool to evaluate the underlying bullish trend conditions. What we can also do from a channel perspective is to simply draw a parallel line to this trend line support, and that channel gives us a boundary, so to speak, of the upward progress of the trend. It provides some additional element of uh, resistance and your ability to analyze the trend. The more important element, though, will always be the trend line support or if you were dealing with the downtrend, a trend line resistance. We can clearly see that if we just simply make some observations in terms of price, is that while price action has remained above the trend line, we've maintained a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. Therefore, the bull condition has remained intact. We've also seen that we've, seen, we've experienced clear directional move in terms of commitment on the part of the market to push prices higher. However, from this high over here, we've noticed a very different change in price action. The markets are highlighting larger swings in price action, and therefore the underlying character of price has changed. Does this perhaps suggest that we are entering a more mature phase of the trend and possibly even phase three? We will see whether the market can hold the support. It fails, starts to rally, whether it'll hold the support, 
time will tell. But we've also noticed that price action has broken through the trend line support. Because that trend line is a reflection of the uptrend, this break over here adds to the concern around a change in market sentiment. Therefore, our conviction around being bullish at this stage would certainly be much lower than during the life cycle of this recovery in price action. If we see price action break below these supports over here, then we would have pretty conclusive evidence that yes, indeed, sentiment has changed. We've completed wave or phase three, and the market is now in a clear downtrend. So that is how we can apply trend lines to evaluate, further evaluate and enhance our ability to read trends. Final point that we'll look at today is just summarizing firstly a couple of points to take on board with regard to these trend lines. Firstly, that a trend line is a representation of the trend. See it as a best fit line against either support or resistance. Trend lines represent points of equilibrium in the trend. In other words, if it's an uptrend, the market should look to buy at that point in time if indeed the trend line is going to hold. Highlighting potential points of entry to a trade indicates when the trend is reversing, i.e. when price breaches the trend line. And then finally, a channel is a parallel line drawn to a trend line, and it highlights the potential upper and lower boundaries of a trend over time. The final point that we will look at today is using the slope of a moving average. Here, in terms of the concept, this is something that we'll apply in more detail as well from a trading perspective in a later webinar, is simply to look at the slope of the moving average. I've just superimposed a moving average over price action, and you can see that there are three different periods. The slope is negative, the slope is fat, flat, sorry, and the slope is positive. It turns negative again and positive once more. This simply will tell you that you are dealing with a downtrend if it's a negative slope, an uptrend if it's a positive slope, and a more sideways move if it is a sideways uh, or relatively no slope to the moving average. Over and above using your evaluation of defining the trend, trend line supports, and bringing into the discussion the slope of the moving average, you now have a very comprehensive set of tools that you can simply apply to analyzing a trend in the market. What you can see, for example, where the slope has moved from negative to flat and then to positive, if we were able to identify a break of these resistance levels, we can clearly see, or even this resistance level over here, that the market has moved potentially from a consolidator phase to a trend phase. The market then pulls back down to this level over here, fails to get below these lows, breaking above here, we notice that the slope of the moving average starts to move positive again. Therefore, the trend of this level is up. We can apply all of the concepts that we've looked at thus far, bringing into the discussion the slope of the moving average, and we have a very strong ability going forward to be able to evaluate and understand how trends behave, how they evolve over time, and how we could potentially look to capitalize from these price movements. That brings us to the end of today's webinar. In today's webinar, we started off by looking at the six tenets of Dow theory, three types of trends, up trends, down trends, and sideways trends, really taking on board and appreciating the importance of applying the view that the trend is your friend, we looked at the different phases, the three different phases of a trend. Very important to be able to define a trend, and we looked at the definition of a trend. That allows us to gain a much better understanding of the trend. We then concluded today's webinar by bringing on board some additional tools and techniques 
that can further enhance our ability to analyze and evaluate trend movements. These are trend lines and channels, as well as the slope of the moving average. In the next webinar, which will take place tomorrow, we will be introducing you to the very powerful tool of Japanese candlesticks. We'll be going through some of the components, the real body and the long shadows, looking at the dynamics of candles. We'll be looking at some key patterns known as one, two and three line candlestick patterns. Over the course of the entire discussion, we'll be illustrating how you can think about applying Japanese candlestick patterns. We will then look at the concept of support and resistance, understanding the importance of historical levels, being able to identify market dynamics at support and resistance levels, and then show you how you can put this all together. Congratulations, everybody. We've completed, and you've completed rather, webinar two of the Advanced Technical Analysis course. I'd be more than happy at this stage. Uh, today's focus was on the anatomy of price action and trend analysis. Hopefully, you can join us tomorrow. So until then, thank you once again, and see you next time. Bye for now.